Thanks for joining me this week on Dream Farm. Today I want to talk about building small food plots. Uh, I'm really going to focus today on a quarter acre food plot that you can build in the woods and how you do it and why you should do it. And I'm going to come back again next week and I'm going to talk about um, how to build a, a quarter acre food plot with almost no equipment. And I've called those poor man plots over the years because you can do them on such a low budget. You basically can get by without any power tools except hand tools. And uh, I had a bunch of them on the farm that I sold and I'm gonna have at least one of them on the farm that I just bought. And I'll show you how I, how I make that when we get into that part of the season. But now you can see behind me that uh, we're still dealing with winter. We got hammered with about 10 inches of snow last night. So any thoughts that I had about shed hunting or getting out on the farm and you know, maybe doing a little bit of scouting, they got uh, covered up with 10, 10 inches of white. But uh, So let's dive into this topic. I do think that building a small plot, you know, let's say maximum one acre within the timber is the most valuable thing that you can do on your hunting property. Uh, not only from the standpoint of making the property better for you to hunt, but also for the resale value of that property. When I look at properties, these little inner secluded plots really jump out at me because you can just envision the deer coming off those bedding areas and coming to these spots first thing in the evenings and that this would be the last place that they would be on their feet in daylight before they go back into the bedding areas for the day. So they are super critical, uh, especially if you're a bow hunter because the small size of the plot makes them uh, a lot more bow hunter friendly because when a deer does come out into that, uh, more than likely it's gonna come within bow range and present you with a shot. So there's two, two types in my mind. One is the naturally occurring you know, semi-opening that you can enlarge using you know, very little equipment. And then there's the ones that you have to build from scratch out of the timber. The ones that you build using equipment, heavy equipment, are obviously gonna be a lot more expensive and I've done some of this in the past. Most of my openings have been uh, poor man style, but I have built two uh, using equipment. And they were both done using a skid loader with attachments. Dream Farm is brought to you by Whitetail Institute Food Plot Blends, the Hunt Stand Pro Whitetail App, and Hoyt Archery. In this next segment, I'm going to show you how we created one of these quarter acre food plots out of the timber. And it took us about uh, three or four hours, five hours to make the opening and another hour for me to get it seeded and fertilized. It's pretty amazing when you think about going from a solid stand, basically of cedar trees and some other small saplings, to a quarter acre plus food plot in just one afternoon. So that shows you what you can really do with this equipment if you get the right stuff on the farm.
And the nice thing about this, uh, you don't have to own the skid loader. I mean, ideally, you have a buddy that you can borrow one from, but even that's not necessary. You know, we use the Cat Rental Store as an option, and that works really well. If you look around on uh, Caterpillar's website, you're going to find that there are these rental stores all over the place. And they've got the equipment and the attachments, you know, the big equipment, the skid steer, and the attachments that you can rent. And you can get a lot of work done in a day. It's amazing what you can build in a day. You can make a half acre food plot out of the woods where there wasn't one before in one day's time. The equipment that you're going to need, you know, really depends upon the size of the project and the size of the trees, more importantly. But I think the forestry mulcher is, is a bare minimum plus the bucket. And uh, they, ha they have one that's that kind of like scarifies, scarifies the ground. It's like a, a rotary, it's not really a tiller, but it tears up roots and it cleans up the surface and kind of smooths it out. That's a really nice attachment too for doing this job. But most importantly, you've got to be able to take it down to the ground. You got to be able to chew these trees up and spit them out. Or if the trees are too big and you can't use the skids to your equipment, then you have to hire somebody with a bulldozer. And that's going to get a lot more expensive. You know, for a couple thousand dollars, you can rent this stuff. But 2,000 bucks isn't going to get you very far with a guy on a bulldozer. So uh, keep that in mind when you're selecting locations. I like spots that are just inside of a ridge line. Like a lot of times you'll find the fields in ag country, you know, the fields go out onto a little bit of a point and then they circle and then they head back out onto the, you know, the bigger open uh, flat areas, better dirt up on top. Well, where it goes out onto that little bitty point, usually if you go deeper, you're gonna find that there's even more space back in there. It was just too narrow for the equipment, but that doesn't mean that you can't get, uh, you know, a little half acre food plot built back in there. And that's going to be really close to the bedding areas, right between the bedding areas and the places where the deer feed during the evening. And that's the perfect place for these transitional, you know, call them staging area, food plots. Uh, but they are killer spots. I mean, towards the end of, of uh, my time on that farm we sold, I hunted on those kind of spots more often than any place else. And I'd hunt both evenings and mornings because they were so productive during both times of the day. So I'll, I'll build a couple of them on the new farm and I'll take you along. I've already got, I think, three locations picked out where I'm going to make uh, these exact types of plots. And I don't think I'm going to need a bulldozer on any of them. I really think that, you know, with a little bit of care, maybe having to skip a few great big giant trees, you know, and take out the smaller stuff, uh, I can get by with the skid loader and the kind of attachments that I talked about. I'm encouraging you to improve your hunting area and for not only the current hunting, but also for the resale value of that property by going to the rental store and uh, picking up, you know, uh, or I guess they can even deliver them to you, but, you know, getting your hands on a skid loader and the attachments that you need to create at least a one quarter acre food plot. I mean, I think uh, a quarter acre is the minimum. You know, if you go any smaller than that, the tree roots that are underneath the ground are going to take too much of the moisture. You're going to have too much of an intertwining of tree roots underneath the plot, and you're not going to get any moisture. Um, it's just, well, I shouldn't say that. They're going to suck up all the moisture, and whatever you plant there is, is basically going to drought out just about every summer. So, you know, I think the quarter acre minimum and maximum of, a, of one acre for bow hunting, and then I like a longer plot for bow hunting. I, I like it 40 yards wide max and then longer. You know, maybe it's 100 yards, 125 yards long. That size really encourages bucks to walk the full length. Because a lot of times you'll find scrapes the whole way down along these, these type of plots. And even though the buck may pop, pop out on the far end, within time, you know, you should have him, you know, right there in front of you. So that's where I'm gonna leave you this week. But like I said, come back again next week and I'll talk about how you can make something very similar without any tools, well, without any heavy equipment, uh, just using hand tools. Well, thanks for joining me this week for the Dream Farm, and we'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode, and remember to always dream big.